Okay, everyone. So I've just jumped into the start of this lecture in order to advertise the return of the foundation seminar, which started uh, earlier this year, but we took a pause and we're going to return. So I'm just drawing on the first blackboard. So foundations seminar. This is myself and Billy Price. So Billy and I started this seminar series in order to ask those pseudo, not even pseudo, just philosophical, mathematically philosophical questions that come up a lot in undergrad that make the pursuit of mathematics sometimes very confusing. So the types of questions that we've been asking, uh, you know, why is set theory the foundation? I'm going to put V in inverted commas here. Is it the foundation of mathematics I'm talking about here? We've also been asking questions such as mathematics is built upon logic, but then logic is a language designed by mathematics. So which comes first? And does one of them always come first? Is it sometimes one? Is it sometimes the other? Do they influence each other? Do they create each other? Do they define each other? Can one not exist without the other, etc.? So the point is that these are very vague, very amateur hour, very naive types of philosophical questions that you might have with mathematics. But Billy and I have been exploring them with the backdrop of formal theorems in the background. So we want to explore these questions, but we want to do it via rigorous theory. So I've looked at I mean, of course, I was going to write Gödel's name on this board. We looked at Gödel's completeness theorem. We looked at Gödel's first incompleteness theorem, which I guess a little bit ironically is actually incomplete at the moment. So we got halfway through proving that uh, famous theorem, and we will return to it at some point. But that's not where we're re-entering into the seminar. So just drawing on the second board here, the reason why I've come to this specific series in order to advertise the return of foundations is because the next goal inside our seminar is to show a surprising application of model theory to algebraic geometry. So what is model theory? The famous mathematician slash logician Tarski uh, discovered model theory motivated by the philosophical question, what is truth? And the way that I would describe what Tarski did is he was creating a tether between the formal mathematics that we write down, the syntax and the language, with the platonic mathematics that exists out there somewhere, the undeniable thing that happens when we perform these manipulations inside the formal theory. And so what's very surprising is that model theory was motivated through this philosophical question of what is truth, but if we take models and think about them as mathematical objects in their own right, then in fact we can use this theory as an uh, we can use this theory to um, in an application to prove a theorem inside algebraic geometry. So I'll write down the theorem very quickly. If I have a polynomial f from Cn to Cn, 
uh, the theorem is very simple. If this is injective, then in fact it's surjective. And the way that the proof works is we say if this is false, then there exists a disproof and we'll call this thing pi. And then what I do is rather than thinking about this disproof as some vague mathematical argument that I do on a blackboard, I'm literally going to take, treat it like a series of formal sentences inside a first order theory. And so then I take pi as a mathematical object and manipulate it into a new proof, pi prime, of an analogous result, but rather than looking at a polynomial from Cn to Cn, I'm going to be looking at the algebraic closure of the finite field of p elements to the same thing, and then get a disproof in this context. And what's cool about this is that in this context, it's easier to prove that the theorem indeed is true. So let me run the sketch again. If the theorem is false inside the characteristic zero case, then we can take a disproof and treat it as a mathematical object and manipulate it into a disproof in the characteristic equal to p case. But then I can do a separate proof to prove that it is true inside the characteristic p case. And so therefore this is a contradiction. So this implies that the theorem is true. And so therefore we can go back to this original motivation of Tarski's and say, when we were trying to define this tethering between the formal mathematics that we write down and the platonic mathematics that exists out there somewhere, well, when we treat that tethering like a mathematical object itself, it just turns out to be another piece of mathematics. So did we ever really leave the formal world of mathematics or did we ever enter into it? Were we just in the platonic realm the entire time? So I'll ask you again, what is truth? What is logic? What is mathematics? Okay, so these are the kinds of questions that we want to explore, and we'll be covering this very rigorously over the next few lectures, and I'll just advertise the time and the location. So please do come along. It will be at 10 p.m. AEST.